Anyone got anything? <laughs> Is there anything he talked about that you want examples on or things from his life? Um, I know one thing I want to know is um, I am obsessed with ideas and I feel like you also really like coming up with ideas. Um, how, how do you keep all of these different projects separate, but you know, still progressing? Like the restaurant, a book you were, you're working on, Beehive Sport and Social Club, how do you manage it all? Uh, it's a good question. It's not easy. It's not perfect. There aren't like ever probably going to be easy lines in the sand to divide, but I do a couple things. One, I use a tool that I highly recommend all of you invest in uh, called Good To Do. It's a book and complimentary website service that is a fantastic to-do list. Uh, I highly recommend it. If you're in the market for a new to-do, you know, mo, you know, new to-do thing, or, uh, or, or just curious, go check it out. It's awesome. It's really changed the way I work. So that would be the first thing I would say is from a tool perspective. But I would also say I just sit down and I, you know, try to focus on one at a time. So I'll just say, you know, from eight to ten this morning, I'm only going to think restaurant. And then from 12 to 2, I'm only going to think beehive. And you, as much as you try to do that, it never works out that cleanly. But that can be a good thing sometimes because sometimes I get re ideas for the restaurant that then I want to go do in beehive or vice versa. And I think it's okay to allow that kind of bleeding over. It will naturally happen in your mind. Um, but, you know, when I think about the process of being able, you know, forcing yourself to take on more responsibility, more projects, and more balancing more balls, it's kind of, in my mind, like, you know, smashing your head against a wall. And eventually, you're going to break through that wall, and you're going to get, you know, you're going to find yourself at a new level of ability. And you're going to do it all over again. You're just going to smash your head against the wall until you get through that wall, and then you'll find yourself at that much more ability to juggle multiple balls. So don't get frustrated. Because one day you'll be pounding your head against the wall and you'll feel like the headache's gone and all of a sudden you're enlightened and able to be super productive and, and responsible and all that. Cool, thank you. I have a question. Ben, shoot. When you were thinking of leaving Philip Morris uh, and you were, were you playing with a lot of different ideas knowing that you wanted to start your own business or did this idea like strike you and you said, that's it, I'm out? Uh, good question. I, I had been applying for jobs in Salt Lake because I kind of wanted to come do the ski bum thing out here for a couple years while I was young and healthy and fit and all that good stuff. And so I've been applying for jobs, not having much luck at all, you know, using like monster.com and all that nonsense. And then Kind of, and that was kind of like December-ish time, and I was doing that and really having no luck whatsoever. And then uh, one day I was playing in the kickball league after work. It was like what I looked forward to on every Thursday. And I looked, and my friend and I were talking over a beer after the kickball game on his porch. And we just decided, hey, look, this is, this is pretty successful, and it looks like a lot of fun to do. And we started looking around, Salt Lake didn't have anything like it. So once we saw Salt Lake was didn't have a kickball league, we decided, okay, well, we need to go organize kickball in Salt Lake, and then it became pretty clear. Anything else? Bridget was telling us earlier uh, today about how you did something like you took pinatas, and then the people that broke them open got, like, free membership or something. Um, I was kind of curious about like, how you came up with ideas like that, and then what you did to carry them out. Yeah, uh, this is actually, I don't know if I planted you in the audience with this question or not, <laughs> but that is a fantastic question that's going to relate really perfectly to what I just talked about. So when I was thinking of Beehive, I told you I started with this idea of fun. And so, okay, Beehive's fun, but you know, before we even get the first kickball rolling 
and the first kick of the first game off the ground, we're going to have to prove to some people that we're fun so that they take a chance on us and sign up for our kickball league. So really, my thought process went literally like this. What else is fun? And how can we grasp onto it? And I started thinking, hmm, water balloons are fun. OK. Came up with a water balloon idea. And pinatas. No one has a bad time around a pinata. It's like the universal law of pinatas. It doesn't matter if you're watching or you're swinging. It's a really a fun time, right? So we just started thinking, OK, well, what if we made, what if we got beehive pinatas? What if we got some pinatas, made some pinatas and decorated them like beehives? And then what if we invited people to hit them and kind of did like a candid camera? And then the idea kind of flowed from there. But, you know, notice I started, okay, what else is fun? And then how can we latch onto it and kind of share that similar purpose? And then, you know, we'll kind of have the fun halo fall on beehive as a result. So all coming back to that core message, right? Go always, you know, pivot and think around whatever the core is. But that was a lot of fun. That was the first thing we actually did when we got to when I got back to Salt Lake. I spent four days on the road, one of which I stopped in Lawrence to say hi to Ben and Astrid right before they were married. And for eight hours a day driving, I would call everyone I knew and probably some strangers along the way. And Ask them to get their friends together because we were going to start a kickball league. It was a very entertaining cross-country drive. And so, uh, the first, but the first thing we did when I arrived in Salt Lake was we went to the dollar store and we got paper mache, or we got glue, we got crepe paper, and we made these pinatas for the first three days of the company's existence. And that was like our first uh, company activity, outing type thing. It was good though, it worked out well. Anyone have questions about, um, I mean, crazy, weird questions? Anyone get stuck in interviews lately and have a question they didn't know how to answer? Or questions about what they can do this summer? I mean, David's cool, so we want to ask cooler questions than that. But <laughs> uh, All questions are cool. Does anyone know exactly what they want to do? I'm always fascinated by people who in college know exactly what they want to do. I do. <laughs> okay, what do you want to do? I don't know what I want to talk to, like, the box. Oh, you can just talk to, like, the air. Like, Bruce Almighty style. <laughs> okay. Just talk to the air. It comes through the air to me in this air. Okay, um, well, I really want to be a um, public relations coordinator and director of social media for the Disney company. For Disney? Yes. Okay, what fascinates you about the idea of being a, a social media coordinator for Disney? Um, what fascinates me about it, um, it's kind of those things where, you know, you said that it might not sound like that fascinating, but to you it's really fascinating. Just yeah. this idea that you can, like, reach out to like, people all over the world and, like, touch people with the brand of Disney and, like, their message is amazing to me. So to be able to do that would be awesome. So what about, uh, you mentioned Disney in particular, what about Disney kind of uh, speaks to you? Um, well, I just think that they're geniuses when it comes to like marketing and public relations. And um, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously like the obvious things are them being able to, you know, like light up like a mom's face when her like daughter or son sees like their favorite character for the first time and all that stuff. But um, from a business standpoint, I think, you know, they've pioneered a lot of the, like, different social media techniques and things like that, yeah. and so that just amazes me about That's awesome. If, it, it, you know, if and when you get an interview for that position, I would say talk about the creating a smile on the mom's face first. You know, if there was one thing you wanted the person leaving the interview thinking about you, have them thinking about that kind of, that moment and describe that moment and, what, and why it speaks to you. And also, I know a woman who works for Disney. If you want to send me your contact information, maybe I can put you in touch and uh, start the ball rolling. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the real value in these sorts of conversations. It's just connecting people and, and networking and, you know, doing all those sorts of things. So, it's okay. good to ask, I just in case. I will you probably, like, right after this meeting. <laughs> well, well, I can't promise anything, but I'll put you in touch. Okay. See, see what happens. Thank you.
You're welcome. Was Bridget on your contact info? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have been bugging him. Okay. <laughs> is there is there anyone who knows absolutely has no idea what they want to do? Like they are like literally dumbfounded on what they would want their career to be thinking about it. Me. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your name? Corey. Corey. What uh, what do you do for fun? What do you like to do? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I used to play a lot of sports. I like to read mostly. That's about it. <laughs> Well, what's what's the best thing you've done this year? What's the most um, fun thing you've done so yeah. far this year? This year is in like 2013, huh? or like yeah. the school year. Well, uh, 2013. Since the new year, what's like uh, you know first thing that pops in your head? Most fun moment? Um, I spent the new year in Prague. That was fun. What? Okay, so you probably are a person who likes to travel. Am I right? Very much so. Okay, so maybe travel is, is something you need to think about, and there's tons of opportunities to go work and live abroad if that interests you, and there's tons of opportunities right now with, you know, brands kind of becoming international and ex expanding their reach internationally and marketing to new people and new cultures, and I think, you know, when you, you know, thinking about that, and this is just me riffing off your love of travel, um, when you're going to create kind of a career positioning for yourself or a core, the more specific and concrete you can be, the better. So if it's Prague, great. Be the Prague expert of the world. And don't settle for anything less than that. If it's Madrid or Spain, be the Madrid expert of the world. And you know, if you use kind of that as your compass and the, the, the uh, importance of being really concrete and really niche, and really defined, the internet is a beautiful thing because it's empowered people to have really niche careers in really odd, bizarre places. Um, so that would, that would maybe be my advice. Go into travel. That's an awesome career. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what else? Anyone that want to pester him with questions about his other experiences or um, what it felt like when he got his diploma and had to walk off the stage or... Yeah. Um, you mentioned that we should like find one word that we would use to describe ourselves. What's the word that you would use to describe yourself? My word? My word is uh, SHIP. S-H-I-P. <laughs> Like shipping like mail or like a boat. <laughs> it's it's a metaphor that I that a guy named Seth Godin talks about a lot. He's I a know very, him. Very, some of you probably know him. He's a yeah. really influential, famous marketer. Cool. Um, and the metaphor is if you're shipping, then you're constantly kind of pushing your ideas and your work out into the world, regardless of if it's ready or if the voice in the back of your head tells you it's dumb or like people won't like it or your family will think you're stupid, just always be shipping things out. So like, just send them out before they're perfect and then work on them in kind of in a public space. And so my word and my kind of career mission is to just start things, ship them out to the world. I don't think I ever see myself being the guy Who's the, who's the CEO who takes a $1 million company and turns it into a $20 million company? I'm the guy who takes it from zero to one. So that's kind of going to always be my focus, is kind of starting new things and shipping out new ideas and new approaches to the world. How do you recommend going about that as a college student? Like, all these ideas that you have, like, if you have an idea, why am I echoing Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. If you have an idea and you're really passionate about it, you know, us as college students, it's just there's lots of different things that like make it hard for us to really go about, you know, implementing something like that. So what recommendations do you have about starting like not taking your idea from an idea to making it happen, especially like as a young person? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um well it's interesting you say that because that corner and I have long-standing debate, which is ongoing, about the value of college toward helping un or achieve their own goals. 
And I'll let you tell, I'll let Ben tell his perspective some other time, but I think college can be a, a great platform to actually do things because you're not kind of bogged down with the nine to five, uh, you know, ho hum of life. You get to live this kind of very flexible, dynamic livelihood where you're going to class and, and connecting with new people all the time. And so, I, you know, I would encourage you to take your idea, whatever it is, and First of all, start networking with everyone who has that same idea, that same passion. And that can be over the internet, that can be locally, it can be regionally. You know, there's meetup groups, there's uh, blogs, there's forums. You know, so many people read blogs on things they're passionate about and they just read. You should start interacting. So just to get a feel for the community that the idea revolves around. Or the, yeah, the community the idea revolves around, or vice versa. And... Just start, you know? The biggest hurdle, I think, in everyone's journey toward creating something that's lasting and impactful is starting. You know, once you get the ball rolling, it's all of a sudden you have this like wind behind your sails and everything seems easier. And it only gets easier and easier the more time you've spent on it and the more that you've been doing. So I would tell you, whatever the idea is, do you, do you mind sharing it? Maybe I could be a little more specific. Oh, I don't know. I don't have anything in particular at this point, but just something that, I don't know, I can't think of anything right now, but... Well, let's, let's, say it's, let's say it's being a veterinarian, or like animal care or something like that. Like, go start volunteering for free at the local animal care hospital. Uh, maybe you create a blog that kind of links to all different sorts of animal care resources around the internet. Maybe you start a meetup group in... Uh, Columbia, Missouri, that for people who are passionate about animals and animal rights, maybe you connect with the leader of PETA saying, hey, I'm this person and I'm interested um, in animal care and animal rights. Maybe you, uh, you just do a lot of things. And, and I think the listing thing will come in handy a lot. If you kind of create lists of 10 ideas and totally turn off the filter in the back of your head that we all have that says that's a dumb idea, turn that off and just write it down anyway. And you do that for, let's say, two months, you'll have at least five ideas that are good ones to get that idea rolling and get the ball going in a, in a way that you think is, is uh, going to be helpful and impactful. Thank you. And then... So connect oh, ideas and then yeah. just take, start before you're ready. Start before you're ready. I just wanted to give one of the tips you gave the last presentation um, about tweeting someone uh, similar to the thank you thing, but tweeting someone within the field that you really respect. Um, because after David told us that, later on, I decided I was going to go out on a limb and tweet um, the vice president of strategic marketing and communications for MTV and ask if they had if he had information about mentorships or internships um, with MTV, and he actually tweeted me back and said, direct message me on Twitter, and I'll send you my email. Um, and I, he sent me my, his email address, and I emailed him, and he forwarded me over to uh, one of the main guys in HR at MTV, and that was all from tweeting someone in the field who I thought never in 15 years would would tweet me back so and I think that was one of the really t helpful tips you made I mean I know for me personal communication is important but it's also important like you taught us to go out on a limb and yeah go absolutely. for it I mean, these people are out there and they're more readily accessible than ever and I think part of the problem my problem with college maybe is that I feel like as college students we're kind of put in this silo of what a college student is that you're either like in a fraternity or you're like a, you know, a, a full-time student. You don't have to be a full-time student. You can be a part-time student and still take a full course load and be a part-time professional advocate for whatever idea that you're, you're, you're passionate about. It's not like you, know, you go from graduation and all of a sudden you can start doing things in the world and making a difference and making an impact. And I think you know, getting over that perceptual hurdle is you know an opportunity for the for the uh, for colleges everywhere and for college students to do it themselves to realize they can make a difference in college as students.
No. Well, I think um, everyone here gained a lot from you. We'd like to give you a round of applause if you can hear it from the sky. But <laughs> thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us all of these really helpful tips. Um, and I have all of your contact information. We'll like post these videos. There's going to be multiple on Facebook. Maybe some with tornadoes mentioned them. Um, but again, like, thank you so much for taking all this time out of your day and sharing everything with us. Yeah, thank you. It's been an awesome experience. I've never spoken to a projector screen of myself before. Yes. <laughs> and I kind of half imagine that everyone's slumped over sleeping right now and you're just uh, kind of talking to me. But uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope you all found it somewhat it. valuable. Definitely get in contact if I can help you in any way even if it's just a question or something. Um, and yeah, have a great day. Stay away from those tornadoes. Thank you. We'll, we'll be, I'll post all like the videos and you can, you can see that people aren't slumped over in their chairs. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.